First of all, I would call myself a post-COVID principal. As a post-colonial scholar, post does not mean ending or a given reality is over. Instead, post points to a kind of residue of an experience. In other words, my approach for the job over the next five years will not be simply to get us back to a pre-COVID normal, but to acknowledge and even embrace the pandemic's impact. There are a few things I want us to focus on in two literally related ways. Emmanuel needs to renew the relevance of intentional physical gathering because students, staff, and faculty made an effort to be together in person. This gathering is precious and must be dealt with care. And at the same time, we must cultivate and maximize virtual gathering and distance learning opportunities. As post-COVID principal, I would encourage all of us to be ambidextrous, developing equal facility and appreciation for on-site and online learning, community building, and formation. Secondly, all of us are tired, to some extent traumatized by the pandemic. I would like us to practice care as a spiritual discipline and a daily life routine. Care for oneself, and for one another by drawing from the wisdom in creation and paying attention to our bodies. Indigenous elders tell us that the land teaches. I would like us to connect care with the land and creation as a way of healing, rest, and rejuvenation. I don't think we have been survived this pandemic if I, did not lean on creation, watching plants grow at home, resting under the trees on the city street, sitting and praying beside the water, and noting various animals that accompanied me and my family. I want each member of our Emmanuel College to lean and learn to do on a better self-care by recognizing your creativity, curiosity, consciousness, and contemplation while being in touch with the land. I feel honored and deeply connected with those who went before me. I almost could see the clouds of witnesses watching over me and an image that homilist of the letter to the Hebrews in the Bible use us to encourage a discouraged people. I would not be here without many racialized women tri tribalizers and their persistent work on anti-racism and sexism. These people and communities come from near and far. At the same time, I feel burdened and sad that I had to be the first and that it took almost 100 years for Emmanuel to appoint a racialized person in this position. But then I feel very hopeful and even proud of Emmanuel College, who is indeed a leading theological school in this regard. It is my prayer that Emmanuel becomes a positive model and a powerful force for other schools to follow. In answer to that question, let me share my course offering as an example. My anti-racist preaching and community engagement course as an upper level basic degree and graduate degree course, also as a decoloniality and power designated elective course. While most students were Christians, I had a few Buddhist students and it was one of the you know, most important highlights of that class for me to learn from them and see how our students were mutually challenged and deeply enriched by the differences. This course is also developed as a team taught course with a faculty member, Dr. Lynn Caldwell from St. Andrews College in the Saskatoon Theological Union. Thanks to this course cross course offering, 
The course drew students from the Center for Christian Studies, UCC Anglican Diaconal Theological School, and the, the Lutheran Theological Seminary uh, in Saskatoon and from other Western provinces. I would like to see more of these cross-collaborative teaching and learning opportunities with other United Church and other uh, denominational schools whose mission is to equip students to serve and lead the church and the world. Regarding enhancing our multi-religious approach to theological education, I would like to underscore the importance of having the multi-religious cohort course that all entering basic degree students must take. I was privileged to have been invited as a guest teacher to this class since its inception and I am very excited uh, to witness students from various religious traditions learning about other religious practices and beliefs while trying to deepen their own traditions. Building upon this course, I would love to move our school uh, more deeply into its commitment to become an inter-religious rather than simply a multi-religious institution to step up toward inter-religious theological education requires some consolidations between different degrees and different course offerings. For example, most MDiv students are Christian and many MPS students are not Christian. I want to support the vice principal and program directors to consolidate, you know, opportunity to kind of explore few required courses between these degrees so that they can become pedagogically interreligious and much more engaging. This interreligious pedagogical initiative applies to professional doctorate and other graduate programs as a number of non-Christians pursuing graduate studies are increasing. In, in addition, I would uh, work with admission officer and uh, recruitment coordinator to promote uh, attracting other students who might be identify themselves as spiritually um, and denominationally fluid and religiously hybrid. The population of people who, who are in that category are growing, and these folks are changing the religious landscape for today and tomorrow. I think Emmanuel, with our inter-religious sensitivity, is in the best position to welcome them and there is a robust enrollment opportunity here. I would love to carve out and dedicate a spot on our college property to create a vegetable or wildlife garden where we can plant the seeds, tend the soil, and share its beauty and harvest with each other and the wide, wider community. This garden could be a place for self-care, rest, and meditation. It could serve as a decolonizing learning site and a relationship builder with indigenous communities. 